Welcome back everyone, I'm k Plays Games, this is EVE Online, I'm in my pod, so that can only mean it's time for another ship fitting guide. Now at the end of the last video I said we were going to do something a little bit different because we've been doing a lot of level 2 mission cruiser fits and we've had a request for a level 3 Myrmidon fit, so that's what we're going to do. We're not going to be picking anything random because we've had a request, so we're going to fulfill that request right now. So let's get into this. So we'll open the fitting guide. We shall go to hulls and fits. We're going to type in Myrmidon. Combat battle cruiser, Galente, Myrmidon. And simulate the ship. And first of all, we'll take a look at the traits as always. And the traits for the Myrmidon are Per level of Galente battle cruiser, skill, you get 10% bonus to drone hit points and damage. So at maximum skill, you're going to get 50% extra hit points and damage to all your drones and 7.5% bonus to armor repair amount. So again at maximum level this is going to be 37.5 armor repair amount increase which is rather nice. The roll bonuses are you can use one command burst module and there's a 50% bonus to that command burst module's area of effect range that's good in fleet not so good solo. And there's a 12.5% bonus to your drone micro-warp velocity. So this thing is very much a drone boat. Let's take a look at it. It's vertical, which is always good. Vertical ships are always the best ships. And essentially this thing is a larger version of the Vexor. So we've done Vexors a few times on this channel. We've done it for level 2 missions. We've done it for combat exploration. So we're just going to fit this thing pretty much like a large Vexor. Now the Myrmidon is actually very versatile, you can fit it with shields, I'm not sure why you would in the year 2022 because as we saw in the traits it does get bonuses to armour repair amount, but classically people would shield it and then put lots of damage stuff in the lows, as we know in 2022 an armour tank only needs to be 3 modules, 1 repairer, 1 reactive hardener and 1 cap battery to run them both. You can fit this as a brawler or a sniper. If you're Omega, you can fit a medium micro jump drive and fit some sentry drones. It only has 100 megabits of drone bandwidth, so it can only use four heavy or sentry drones at maximum, but four sentry drones in level three missions is more than enough. So you can micro jump drive 100 kilometers away and snipe things with sentry drones if you want, if you're Omega. I think we'll try and make this fit alpha friendly not particularly low skill, but it will be alpha friendly. So if we're not going to be micro jump driving and sniping, we can either go micro warp drive and blasters and webs and medium drones, or we can go medium range with rail guns and an afterburner and again, lots of medium drones. So I think we'll go down the medium range route with this thing, make it quite standard. So let's get into this. Now it is fairly easy to get a Myrmidon to have two armor repairers because one might not be enough if you're low skilled so we'll do them first off. First of all we'll go and do these. So hull and armor, armor repairers, medium, two tech, two medium armor repairers. These do not have the gold border around them so these are alpha. So two of these and then we'll do armor hardeners, reactive armor hardeners get one of them on, done. And I think all three remaining low slots are going to be drone damage amplifier twos, which again are alpha modules. Right, that is the low slots taken care of. Let's just fill the, the drone bay with drones. Drones, combat drones, we'll put some mediums in, we'll put hammerheads because they're going to be quite lazy. Hammerheads do thermal damage and most NPCs other than then Angel Cartel have Thermal as their secondary damage weakness, so we don't have to change out the drones all the time. And we'll have a flight of lights in as well. And we'll even put some heavy drones in and we'll make them faction because Tech 2 are Omega, as we see, Omega symbol. Come down here, Federation Navy Ogre. Put four of these in because four is all we can use. Just check that these are alpha. Yep, no omega symbol, so that's nice. Now the problem with heavy drones in level 3 missions is that 
most NPCs will drop aggression to you and actually start attacking your drones. So they do do a lot of damage, but they are quite vulnerable. Even hammerheads will attract quite a lot of fire, but your hobgoblin should be fine. Right, that's the drones done. Let's take a look at medium slots now, I think. Propulsion-wise, we're gonna go uh, an enduring 10 mega newton afterburner, and then we're gonna go up to engineering equipment, capacitor batteries, large, and put a large compact cat battery in, because we always like these. Okay, let's just turn the afterburner off, because we're gonna be working on the capacitor now, because we are gonna need more cap life than five minutes. So let's have a look at the rigs. Come down to engineering rigs, medium, and we'll have a look at what we can do with these. 8 minutes 24 with a Tech 2 capacitor control circuit. 8 minutes 51 with semiconductor memory cell. So that's more, so we'll do that, then we'll check again. Okay, it looks like we're going to be stable with one Tech 2 cap control circuit and one Tech 2 semiconductor memory cell if the afterburner's off, so that's quite good. It's only just cap stable. We could, of course, put another Tech 1 1 on. We're going to be adding guns at some point and that's going to drain more cap and probably some active modules here. Yeah, let's do that. I don't usually like having three cap rigs. I would have quite liked to have a drone durability enhancer, but then our drones have 50% extra hit points and damage because I do have maximum skills. So I think the drones will be okay. On the subject of drones, let's get some drone upgrades in, make this a proper drone boat. Even though we aren't getting traits to our drone speed, there is nothing wrong with making them even faster. So a drone navigation computer too goes in. This adds 30% to your drone's velocity. That's when they turn on their micro -watt drives. Drones turn on the micro -watt drives when they're traveling between targets. So this will get them target to target faster and therefore kill things a lot faster. Let me just check this is, nope, that's Omega. Let's take it back off. Let's put a Tech 1 navigation computer. Is this Omega? No, Alpha. Good. Right, next thing we need is a drone tracking link, an omnidirectional tracking link. I do wish they'd changed the wording from omnidirectional tracking link to drone tracking link, because that's what it is and that's what it does. Tech 2 is Omega, so let's not do that. Let's do an enduring, if we can find it. Yeah, here we are. This should be Alpha. Yes, it is. And I think we'll leave the last mid slot where it is at the minute and we'll have a look at some guns. Hybrid turrets. I mean, you can put any turrets you want because the traits don't give you anything for using hybrid turrets. In the olden days, you would see a lot of artillery cannons put up here because they don't use any capacitor, but then they do need a lot of power grid to be fitted. And unless you have cross-trained for the projectile weapons, you're going to be Galente and be using hybrids, so I think we'll just stay with hybrids. Medium. I don't think we're going to be able to fit 250 millimeter, but we will fit 200s. And yes, alphas can use Tech 2 medium weapons. Can we get five of these on? Ah, not quite. Well, we can get four of them on. So if we do four of these, we can come down to drone upgrades and get a, a drone link augmenter, which adds. 20 kilometers to your control range bonus. I do have maximum skill, so my drone control range is 60 kilometers. But if you need more, you can add a drone link augmenter. Right, let's have a look at the ammo for the weapons. Obviously, antimatter is the high damage. Shortest range one. And the shortest range isn't all that short. I mean, fall of range of 26 is still pretty good. Mouse over offense, and the guns are adding 150 DPS, that's quite respectable. We can kill destroyers with that. So we'll use the guns on destroyers, maybe some frigates, and let the medium and heavy drones wipe out all the cruisers. And that's one thing we can do. Iron is the longest range ammo, it goes all the way out to 56 kilometers, but it only does 62 DPS, which is pathetic. Lead is the medium damage, medium range, fall of range 40. DPS 100, respectable. I think we'll carry some lead as well. Some lead and some antimatter into the cargo. Now, what are we going to do with this final mid slot? I think what we're going to do with this is put a sensor booster on. Because as we see, our drone control range is 80, but our targeting range is only 68. I would quite like to extend that. I'm pretty sure Tech 2. Yeah, Tech 2 sensor boosters are Omega, so we're not going to be getting one of them. We'll get an Enduring one on. 
Yeah, that's fine. So our targeting range is now 87. We'll be running this without a script. Without a script, it adds both scan resolution, which is your targeting speed and your maximum targeting range, and some ECM defense as well, in case we get ECM by Garista. So that's quite a nice little fit. If we use antimatter and heavy drones, with my skills, we're getting just under 700 DPS, which is respectable. It's cap stable, even with the afterburner on. It's not the fastest of ships. I mean, 421 is quite slow. But then we know it projects its drones all the way out to 80 kilometers, and these drones are going to be fast. If we have a look at the drone bay and show info on the hobgoblins, the numbers in green are numbers which have been affected by the ship fit. So obviously, my skills plus the ship traits. Oh, we'll scroll down. Yeah, we are at maximum velocity, so our link drones are going to move from target to target at a shade under 6,000 meters a second. That's going to make things pretty fast to clear. And we do have a tiny bit of power grid and CPU left. I'm pretty sure it's not enough to upgrade these guns to 250s, so I think we'll leave this fit like this. So we have a dual armor rep triple drone damage. I mean, if you put any more than three damage things on, you're running into the stacking penalty. I mean, you run into the stacking penalty after the first one, but adding a fourth would be really quite bad. We will just check, however, whether or not we get more DPS by exchanging one of these for a magnetic field stabilizer. 699 DPS plays 676. Right, so three drone things are the way to go. Right, I shall go and buy this fit and then we'll go and run some missions with it. And here we are. Here is our lovely shiny vertical Myrmidon. It's such a cool looking ship. Any ship which is vertical always gets my vote. Right, let's go and find a level 3 agent. Okay, we've been offered a level 3 mission called the Sevens Prison Facility. It's just a seek and destroy, get out there, kill everything. I think this is mercenaries? Can't remember. We'll soon find out. Again, because it's a level 3 mission, the pay is appalling. 154,000 bonus rewards, 155,000 more if you do it within 1 hour and 32 minutes. A measly 566 loyalty points. So let's accept this and go and kill everything. It is annoying that you have six blisters on the side of the ship here, but it only has five high slots. That's because they changed the turret layout quite some time ago and didn't bother updating the ship model to reflect that. It's just bathing how cool this ship looks. Look at this thing, it's beautiful. Right, enough sightseeing, it's fighting time. Everything's well within our range, so I think we'll start with the sentry guns. And why not? We'll put out the heavy drones and see what they can do. We'll turn on the tank and the sensor booster and the tracking computer. See how slow heavy drones are, even though we have a navigation computer and traits for it. What's their maximum speed? It's not terrible, 2,000 meters a second. Well, the sentry guns are dying very quickly. Good, then we'll send them over here. And we shall fire our guns at the frigates because they're on approach. So they should be easy to hit. No shield warning, do not care. We are an armor tank ship. Boom! Two frigates dead. This is why it's always always worth fitting guns. And multitask. Okay, good. And then I think we'll reload to lead ammo. It's only going to take five seconds because it's a hybrid weapon. Hybrid weapons reload in five seconds. Cool. Full of range 40. That's within 40. See the drones are taking some fire from these ships. 
see the yellow box, so they're only target locking us, which means they're firing at the drones. But I think it's going to be okay. We'll just target lock the drone and have a look. There we are, everything's dead. Let's have a look at this prison. Yep. Never even got into armour. Now... Oh, no. Oops, I accidentally told the other three drones to attack our own drone there. My bad. <laughs> now it's our armour. Whoops. One good thing about using faction drones over Tech 2, I mean, we know that Tech 2 heavy drones are Omega only, but that doesn't really matter because faction drones have like double the hit points of Tech 2, and on this ship they get even more bonuses for that. So we could have done that with the medium and light drones, we could have made them faction as well. So these things, even though they do attract aggression from NPCs, they are actually quite tanky. Unless of course you're an idiot and you tell them to attack each other like I did. Don't do that. Fly smarter than I do. Well the dual armour reps weren't needed. In fact, we didn't even need one armour rep because we never got below half shield. Well, we did, because we heard the warning. We just... We only just got below half shield, and everything died. This was not a particularly difficult mission. I'm going to take the time and have a look what this overseer structure dropped. And then we'll get another mission. Well, the only thing this dropped were elite slaves. And these actually do have a legality to... Pulse speed of 1150, with only one rep running, six and a half minutes, with the guns off 12 minutes, so that's quite viable, well, that's something you could do, that's something else to think about, it just make this kind of tedious getting to warehouses and between acceleration gates a little bit faster, and of course the price of not being cap stable with everything running like this ship is. But then cap stables really just for laziness. And because I'm not sure what your skill levels are like. I mean this ship is cap stable with my skills, but it's only just cap stable. Right, open the warehouse, grab the wine. We could just leave, but what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna go straight up. And we're gonna kill everything. Battle cruisers, ooh, hopefully a test. Okay, this guy's at 20, that's fine, he's within weapon range. And we've been sensor damped, which is quite annoying. 
So our targeting range has gone to hell. That's fine. Right, we're going to put out the medium drones here because there's elite enemies here. Uh-oh. Reinforcement spawn. Whoopsie. Right, let's just help the drones kill this guy. Because that is an elite cruiser who will have very high resistances, as we see. Very high resistances. And we've lost target lock on it because we've been damped, so I'll have to reacquire. This is one thing that's really good about having drones. Your drones don't stop attacking because you've lost target lock. They keep their target lock and keep firing on the target. I think the next things that have to die are going to have to be these destroyers, because destroyers do add a, a decent amount of damage. Good. That's one cruiser down. Let's see if we can pick off this frigate herself. Not quite. See how quickly these medium drones demolished that destroyer? It was like one shot. And another one, one shot. Good. And all the armor tanks actually being used. We're slowly grinding down this frigate. Hmm. Actually, the drones are going to have to go and kill that. Because he's en route to them. We just stop the ship. I think we've pulled enough range. And we'll group the weapon. Reload it for lead. The medium drones will just pick their own targets now. We'll just shoot something else. What's the range with this? 40. Right, good. We'll plink away at this. And we'll have a look at what the drones are shooting at and we'll target it and see how quickly they're killing it. Well, the answer to that was very. They killed it by the time I target locked it. Where are they going now? Here. Right, okay, let's have a look. This NPC has a name. He is elite. It has very high resistances. I'm not sure he'll drop any good loot, but we'll certainly pay a little bit of attention. See how quickly the drones just demolish everything? Again, it's because I have maximum skills and the ship gets 50% bonus to their damage. And we have, obviously, three drone damage amplifiers in the low slots. We've just about killed one cruiser. I think we'll reload to the high damage ammo now. Once this thing's dead. Tank is holding absolutely fine, as we knew it would. Because we are repairing 112 hit points a second. Which is rather nice. Right. Drones, if you could go and take care of the battle cruisers, that'd be good. Thank you. Right, it's our set destination. Back to the agent right now. They may only be medium drones, but they're absolutely chewing up everything in this mission. If we were to put the ogres out, everything would probably drop aggro on us and shoot at them and there's a lot of cruisers and battle cruisers in this mission and even though they've got bonuses and they're faction heavy drones they would die quite quickly in this mission which is why we haven't been using them right drones on him guns on this guy Quite a lot of our shots are missing because he's quite close. They will just keep him at range and line him up. And here come the drones. In fact, we're not going to keep him at range. We're going to stop firing the guns because we're missing quite often. The drones are on the way. Just reload on. We'll just approach him so we're closer to his wreck when he dies. I hope he drops some loot. Boom, dead. Empty wreck. How annoying. Well, he might have been elite, but he wasn't a commander. It's just a normal medium wreck. If it was a commander, it would say Serpentus Commander Wreck. But he's not a commander. He didn't drop any loot. 
Warp drive active. Let's get the hell out of here. All right, a slight change of plan. Now, this shit does do 700 DPS. All right, 699.1. It does 700 DPS. It repairs 112 hit points a second. It's cap stable. So I'm thinking, why don't we try a level four mission in this thing? I mean, if you have a low skill Dominix, you'll get pretty much similar stats to this. In fact, you might not even repair as much. So let's try a level four. Now I did go to one agent, and that agent offered us the Assault. Which if you run level 4 missions, you might recognise because it's one of the harder level 4 missions, so I gave that the body swerve. I don't think we'll be able to do that. But this mission has offered us the right hand of Zazmataz. Which is quite a nice mission, because there is a named NPC in this mission called Zor. And he sometimes drops an implant, which is worth rather a lot of money. So I think we're going to try this. It is quite difficult. There is a lot of DPS in the field. There's a lot of battleships. But I think we're going to go for it. What's the worst that could happen? Well, we could blow up. That's the worst thing that can happen. So we're being given a shade under half a million isk for doing it. A solid 2,794 loyalty points. And bonus rewards of 650,000 more if we do it within 2 hours and 48 minutes. So let's accept that set destination and see if we can do it or not Warp drive active one other thing that led me to thinking that we can do level 4 missions is that we know our targeting if we simulate and turn on the sensor booster our targeting range is 87 and our drones project all the way out to 18 with my skills with this fit so I think we'll be okay I think this mission drops you right in amongst the whole nest of bad guys at about 30 kilometers. That's a little bit too close. I'd rather make them travel to me before they open fire, so I think we'll try and warp to the site at around 50-ish. I'm not sure warping in at 100 would do us any good. Or maybe that would be wise. So instead of clicking this button, which would warp us in at about 25-30 right on top of them, we're going to go here and we're going to warp to location within 70. Warp drive and then active. stop. Because sometimes when you tell it to warp in at 70, it actually warps you right to the landing beacon, which is what we don't want. So then we'll try again, go into an encounter, warp to location within 70. Let's go. Warp drive active. Right, this could get nasty. The first thing you need to kill is the named NPC called Zor, because he does cruise missiles, which, as we know, always hit. And his cruise missiles hit for a thousand damage each time. I think his rate of fire is something like four seconds, so every four seconds he's going to hit us with a thousand damage. So he is the first thing that needs to die. Okay, where have we landed? At 70-ish? Well, that's perfect. Let's lock him up. And send the medium drones. And hope that not everything aggresses the medium drones. That would be bad. 59. You've got to wait for them to get within 80. I'm not going to move closer to him. I want everything to be approaching us. Come on, Zor. Come on. Move your battleship. There we go. See, that's his cruise missiles, taking off big chunks every single time they hit, which is quite annoying. I'm going to reload to lead. I'm going to clear the frigates. I mean, Zor hasn't got huge resists. He does go down quite easily. He has half a million bounty as well, which is quite nice. Okay, the drones are actually getting attacked by these frigates here, which is rather annoying. But they should be okay. Yeah, and these frigates are also moving in to engage our drones. Let's stop finding it then. Okay, Zor's going down. One of our drones is getting beat up. Come on, kill him, kill him. Good. 
And let's hope that the drones can make it back without getting killed. Are they webbed? Nope, doesn't look like it. I think we're going to lose one drone. Or is the extra speed we've given them enough to get them home? Yep, that's good. That's very good. That's what we like to see. Right, let's spit out the little drones and get them to kill all these frigates. And they'll start working on the cruisers. Good. Very good. And then once all the frigates are off the field, we'll then switch over to the medium drones again. Not even the heavies actually. Oh, okay, these frigates seem to be elite frigates. Because something is chewing up our drones big time. Ah oh, well, we lost a drone. Oh well. We should probably move. Because the tank is under quite a lot of pressure. Man, this mission's quite evil. Might even lose a second drone here, if I'm not careful. Thanks. We'll be okay. I'm going to stop fighting this and change to antimatter. And there's the low armor warning, which apparently I've got set quite high. Yeah, I've got that set at 66% for some reason. Let's put it down to 50. We did lose a second drone. That's rather quite annoying. Yikes, we are getting our ass kicked. Let's align out to the station. Stop fighting. And warp. Warp drive active. Well, it was fine until it wasn't. really quite annoying. Things are going fine, and then they weren't. Just hang outside the station until we've repaired our armour, then we'll dock. There we Docking go. Docking permission requested. Docking request accepted. Warp drive Right, active. let's try that again. Then what I'm going to do is that I'm going to wait until one of the armour repairers has done half a cycle and then turn the other one on. So instead of getting a thousand hit points every nine seconds, we're getting 506 every four and a half. This might make a difference, it might not. Just so there's not nine seconds of us taking lots of damage before repairing quite a bit, we'll just repair a little bit more often. That's sometimes a good thing to do. It uses slightly less cap as well. Right, let's see where we land. Because we knew we'd drawn them off from the warp end point. Yep, that's quite a good range, I quite like that. Right, let's start working on all the cruisers, shall we? And we'll just get moving. Oops. Better the medium drones. Get them to attack this guy. That was the wrong target. I wanted them to attack the, the cruisers, not the battleship. I think it was the battleship that was doing all the damage to us, so I think we'll just try and stay away from it. We'll just run away. And I don't think these cruisers are yellow boxing because they're attacking the drones. I think they're yellow boxed because they're short range weapon cruisers and they're not in range to shoot at us yet. I think our drones are missing because they were still doing their approach speed and they were orbiting it so fast that they were missing. There we are. Yeah, as soon as they got into their slower orbit speed, they absolutely wrecked it. Now where's Zor's wreck? Right, let's just approach his wreck. I think we'll be able to deal with the incoming damage now. Yep, that all looks good. Jolly good. As soon as we're in range, we'll open this wreck and see what we get. No, oh, only the navigation link. Anything else worth keeping? That is. I'll take that. That's good. Thank you very much. 
Yeah, nothing's aggressing the drones. Tank's fine because we've removed all the squishier cruisers. It's all good. See, none of these are commanders, they're all generic wrecks. This implant gives 10% bonus to afterburner duration, which means it uses 10% less cap because the cycles last 10% longer. This is one of the two implants this guy can drop. The other one is the navigation hyperlink. As we see here, that's worth about 70 million isk, which is quite nice. Well, that was not easy. But it wasn't hard. We did have to warp out. Simply because I got my positioning and target management wrong and I didn't move until everything was on top of us like a complete idiot. We did lose two light drones because all these frigates turned out to be elites, which is quite annoying. I mean, look at this thing. It's worth 1,700 isks. Let's just jettison it. Don't want that, that's crap. And to blitz this mission, you could just destroy the outpost headquarters and then leave. It doesn't take all that much to kill. But it's almost worth sticking around to at least kill Zor and hope that he drops the hyperlink, which is worth 70 million isk. And we'll see what this outpost headquarters drops as well. Okay, impressive explosion incoming. Yeah, that'll do. Orb drive active. Right, so that was how I would fit a Myrmidon for level 3 and possibly level 4 missions. We we'll might go back and finish the last four cruisers in the level 2 mission hierarchy next time round. I was actually taking a look through the playlist and I realised we haven't actually done any of the three combat oriented Minmatar cruisers. I promise you that was not deliberate, that was just the way that the random number generator worked and I wasn't paying attention. And I didn't realise we hadn't done any Minmatar, so I would like to apologise to all Minmatar players. We haven't done any of your ships yet. Maybe next time we'll roll a Minmatar ship for level 2 missions. Whatever we end up doing, I hope you come back for it. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And I hope you take very good care of yourself until we see each other again. See you later.